I'm sure most of you guys probably know Jordan Peterson, famous for fabricating persecution because he didn't want to show basic human decency and respect to trans people. Well, his work is being referenced by these famous televangelists right now. I use the term work loosely, of course. This is Lance Walna, and he's a guest pastor on a TV show called Flashpoint. It's owned and operated by the one and only Kenneth Copeland. It's just far-right Christian nationalist propaganda, but my God, is it crazy to listen to. So anyways, they went on this Flashpoint episode to spread the trans panic, and they bring up an issue that Jordan Peterson talks about. This is part two. If you haven't seen part one, don't sweat it. You don't have to see part one to understand what's happening here. It stands independently of the rest. I figured we'd go through some of Jordan Peterson's psychology claims and talk about why he's wrong, and then we'll continue on to listen to the Flashpoint crew build a whole ridiculous argument off of his flawed premises. Let's get into it. This was Jordan Peterson's argument. If you invite gender confusion into society, if you confuse kids about what gender is and all that stuff, then it's going to create a mass psychosis event where people are just going to be confused about everything and obsessed with blah, blah, blah. Complete nonsense, beginning to end. It, it was all nonsense from the very beginning. And the fact that he's citing the papers that he was citing from 300 years ago tells me he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows he's full of shit. Jordan Peterson does. This is from an interview he did with Kyle Kalinske. It's a 13-minute interview, so let me just like play a, a, a section of the interview, the part that I'm talking about here. They were talking about Elliot Page being trans, now Elliot. They were talking about how he was basically sparking a mass psychosis event by coming out as trans and convincing like thousands of young kids, blah, blah, blah. It's all just nonsense, dude, but let's keep listening here. That's, that's a whole bit. Jordan Peterson is really upset that Elliot Page is getting surgery to remove his breasts. A as if it's not like an adult's decision to do what an adult wants to do. Then why would the physician be criminal? Don't adults have that right if they want to transition? Yes. No. Is he going to respond? Is he just going to sit there looking like a fool? Everything legal isn't criminal. Not everything legal isn't criminal. What? No. If it's illegal, then it is criminal. By definition. Does he mean not everything moral is illegal? Is that what he meant? Or vice versa? Because I, I could agree with him on that one. If it's illegal, then it is criminal by definition. And do they have that right? See, I would have left Ellen Page alone if she hadn't been... Elliot Page. Elliot Page. The fact that he went out of his way to misgender like this is fucking disgusting. What is wrong with this guy? Honestly. What is wrong with him? That he would do something like this. Intentionally malicious to hurt people. Disgusting. Parading her new abs in a fashion magazine. How many kids do you think she can convince to convert? A one? Yeah. Thousand? Okay. Let me tell you this little fun fact about myself. After leaving religion behind, I, I actually had the choice of being trans if I wanted. Never crossed my mind. Never crossed my mind. Never had an interest in transitioning to being a woman. You know why? Because I'm not trans. I'm cis. It would bother me deeply to wear a dress or to perform gender roles of the opposite gender, or it would bother me deeply to perform gender roles of a woman. I couldn't. I simply couldn't because I'm not a woman. That's just what it is. What about Jordan Peterson? Do you think that he could talk himself into wearing a dress? Would it bother him deeply? Yes, it would. It would bother me deeply. You know why? Because he's not a woman. And neither am I. And that is exactly how trans people feel. It's like waking up every morning. It's like you, right now you're a dude. One morning you wake up and you're a woman. Suddenly everybody's treating you like you're a woman. Uh, you know, society views you as a woman. It would bother you beyond belief. 
because you are not a woman. You're a man. Or vice versa. That's what trans that's what being trans is like. But he thinks it's some kind of a hysteria that's taking place or whatever right now. People don't transition for the hell of it. It does not happen. No, not See, yeah. I, no, no, really. I want to I want to Okay, now listen to Jordan Peterson act like a smug, insufferable asshole here. In a fashion magazine. How many kids do you think she can convince to convert? None. A one? Yeah. Thousand? No, not See, yeah. I, no, no, really. I want to I want to respond to that. Yeah. I think that with the trans community, it's very similar to the gay community where back when that first became a big issue, people thought, oh, if we talk about it, if it's in magazines or whatever, we're promoting kids to go down that path. But really what happened is people are who they are. And that if they're gay, they just decided to be no. like, yeah, I'm gay. And they were. Dude, Jordan Peterson believes that gay people were convinced to be gay by the people around them. Are you fucking kidding me? This guy claims to be a psychologist? You must be joking, right? Just more open and honest with themselves. So I don't think you're promoting people to do that. No, that's you're just not saying, what happened. If you they are that, it's okay. Wrong. Okay, well, you're I'm, utterly I'm, I'm wrong. Listening. There's I'm nothing listening. about that that's right. So explain well, there's I'm there's been listening. an absolute, look, one of the reasons that I opposed Bill C-16 in Canada to begin with, this pronoun. If you're unfamiliar, Bill, six, Bill, Bill C-16 in Canada was just... Canada adding trans to the list of protected classes in the United States and in Canada both. We have a list of protected classes, right? You can't discriminate against somebody based on disability, age, sex, whatever, you know, religion, all of that stuff. He's just adding trans to the list of protected classes. That's all it was doing. And Jordan Peterson built his name off of claiming it was compelled speech claiming that it was persecution against him, that he would be forced at gunpoint to blah, blah, blah. It's ridiculous. That's how he got famous in the first place, screaming and crying because he was being forced to whatever with trans people. I don't even fucking know what he was claiming. Anyway, uh, that's what they're talking about with C-16. Keep listening to this. Compelled speech bill was because I... It's not a compelled speech bill. It's nonsense. Knew perfectly well what was going to happen when we introduced confusion about gender identity into the. Okay, so it, originally I came into this video from the uh, from the flashpoint video that we were watching. I came into it for this part right here. I wanted to like point out what Jordan Peterson was talking about with gender confusion and everything else because what they're what they were saying in this flashpoint video relates back to what Jordan Peterson said here. Peterson was talking about gender confusion and all that. So exactly what they were saying. So listen to what Peterson says in this part here. And then we'll go back to Flashpoint. Public sphere. Now, the argument was that if we left people with gender dysphoria alone to make their own way and stop torturing them, that we would decrease the mental health load on those individuals. Absolutely. Let them live their lives. That's called freedom, baby. That's what America's all about. And my analysis as a clinician was that for every one person of that sort that we hypothetically save, we doom a thousand more as a consequence of confusion and social contagion. Okay, well, I appreciate the fact that this guy was a clinician, a psychologist, but you can't just say things. You have to back it up with evidence. So what's your reasoning here? L lay your reasoning on me because I have a psychology degree also. Not a PhD, but I did go to school for psychology. So let's hear it. Lay it on me. I knew the literature on psychogenic epidemics. They used to call that mass hysteria. And it's a literature that goes back about 300 years. No, it's literature that is about 300 years old. It does. It's when he says it goes back 300 years, he's implying that it's been studied rigorously by society for 300 years. No, it was studied 300 years ago. That's how old the research papers are. You know, roughly around the time that they were claiming that women were crazy because they had something that called 
uh, because they had something that was called hysteria and they basically had to be brought to a doctor to be touched effectively to solve the problem. That's, you know, roughly around the same time period, give or take. So, yeah, unless you study something today and verify and reaffirm what that literature was saying today, I'm sorry, I simply don't believe it. It's too far-fetched for me, uh, and it should be too far-fetched for anybody to believe without further evidence. And whenever you introduce, often when you introduce social confusion, you can produce a psychogenic epidemic, especially... So what he's doing here is he's describing what 300-year-old quote-unquote studies say about mass hysteria. He's not giving us evidence. He's just describing what he read from a 300-year-old paper that has not been reaffirmed or retested to verify its authenticity or veracity or efficacy or whatever else. Um, so I, I'm completely comfortable, completely disregarding what he's saying so far. Let's keep listening. About 300 years. And whenever you introduce, often when you introduce social confusion, you can produce a psychogenic epidemic, especially among... Generally, it's adolescent females who are most susceptible to it. So I no evidence for any of what he's saying here. He's just saying it authoritatively like he knows what he's talking about. And people believe what he's saying because he was a clinician. He was he has a Ph.D. in this field. I don't care what your degree is in. I, ju I need evidence for the things that you say. If you expect me to believe you, plain and simple, I need evidence for it. And he hasn't provided any. I thought, oh, well, what's going to happen is we'll produce a psychogenic epidemic of gender dysphoria among adolescent females. And that is exactly what's happened. And it isn't the fact that we've freed up people who are, what, in doubt about their identity to be who they are. No, that is actually exactly what we are trying to do as a society. Well, the what I'm trying to do, anyways. That may have happened in a tiny minority of cases. It's absolutely and definitely the case that we've doomed thousands of kids to brutal, mutilating surgery and premature sterility. And we've done that on the altar of our hypothetical moral virtue and... Premature sterility? What is he talking about? You're not allowed to get the trans surgery unless you're over 18. Nobody in the country, as far as I know, offers the, the trans surgery unless you're over 18. So what is he even talking about? Is this a moral panic that he's giving us right now? It sounds like it. All I need is a little evidence. That is it. That's all I've ever asked for. And he, this dude refuses to give it. He uses his authority position as a clinician to weasel people into believing that what he has to say is legitimate in, in any way when it's absolutely not. Passion. Look. I read a corporate analysis of the trans surgery industry last week. Growth rate projection for you lefty types and your anti-corporatism. Growth rate projection, 15% per year. 15% per year. Okay, so it sounds like what he's telling us here is that if people keep getting the trans surgery, quote unquote, as he says, that trans people will make up 99% of the population in the next, what, three or four years? I don't know. 15% increase, that's pretty steep, right? So in in five years, all of America will be trans. And what are we gonna do then? Oh my God. Just now, a $350 million business as of 2022, projected to expand to- Oh my God, it's just obnoxious, dude. The fact that he uses his position as a quote unquote clinician to bolster his- authority and credibility is fucking disgusting to me it's, it's absolutely disgusting this guy and how he acts anyway i think that's what lance Walna was was referring to was jordan peterson's call out to what or call back to this mass hysteria documentation that's like 300 years old and hasn't really been studied since for what it's worth that that study that he's referencing that's like 300 years old the study claims that mass hysteria spreads just like an actual full-blown virus and is communicable 
not as a meme, not as a mind virus, but literally physically communicable. If you're in a room with somebody who believes something, whether you talk to that person or not, you will also believe that thing eventually just by virtue of the fact that you were in a room with them. And that's it. That That is what that literature said. That's what it's about. And I can't believe that Jordan Peterson is like lending credibility to this study that is very obviously like pseudoscientific and caters to magical thinking. It's fucking insane to me. It, it is absolutely insane. Anyways, Lance Walna. Wow, we got off on a tangent. I'm sorry about that, guys. Lance Walna talking about psychogenic episode or epidemics or whatever, where you can spread ideas to people without ever talking to them. Uh, let's see what he has to say here. Let me just step back like 30 seconds and, and get a little bit of what, what he was saying here. A certain kind of deception that gets onto people, and I'm really serious about this, folks. This is evidence of a demonized mindset among people who have been le believing the wrong stuff. They're, they're projecting on us everything that they do which is the reason why we can't just be quiet. Because when you have mass formation psychosis, the only way you break it off the country is to proclaim the truth. Now more than ever, we need bold, um, composed, powerful voices speaking the truth. Amen. Mass formation psychosis, that's not what it's called. And I have no idea what he's even referring to there, but okay. Amen, all right, you know. It's right. true what you need to no it's not true it's nonsense understand is we are at war we are in a war right don't believe me even msnbc says so watch i think that's such a crucial point his followers republican mainstream establishment republicans are echoing these calls for violence all but threatening it what was your take well, first of all, uh, I have my uh, red LED lighting since the Republicans are so, oh, my God, upset because uh, President Joe Biden, uh, they claim, oh, he looked like uh, he was in Russia. Pastor Charles Jenkins has uh, an intro to his song War, uh, where he says, when the enemy is coming at you, you can't fall down, you can't break down. This means war. That is where we are. We are at war with these people. These. Well, it's interesting that this guy says that. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm at war with these people. I would say that these people are at war with us. They, like, the MAGA Republicans are desperate to have a civil war. Seriously. They're desperate for one. And I, they believe that they are in a civil war with us right now actively. A lot of them do. That is my biggest problem with this whole thing. Um, but once again, like I said... If you remember correctly, I pointed out whatever the Democrats say about them, they say it about the Democrats, preferably before Democrats have an opportunity to get it out of their mouths. It's not projection. It is an attempt to preempt the accusations. They know they're coming because they know they're doing these things. When I say they, I mean the thought leaders on the Republican side, like Gene Bailey, Lance Walna. You know, all the people that we're talking about right now on this show. They are actually doing this stuff, so they're preempting the accusations. These folks are evil. They have allowed evil into their house with Donald Trump. He has now dominated the party. This evil is spreading. And when you are in a war footing, you have to respond accordingly. It's about time President Joe Biden decided to get tough. It's about time his advisors stop being weak and stop being impotent and not fighting back. What these people want to do to this country is destroy democracy. They want to rig elections. And so it requires you to stand strong. Well, first of all, I don't like people using the phrases, These, they are evil, they are whatever. I, I don't like that. So I'm not going to defend that. Every other thing out of that guy's mouth was accurate, except for saying that they are evil incarnate or whatever. Um, but I find it interesting, I, like I said, not going to defend it, but I do find it interesting that the things that he said are word for word. Things that Gene Bailey has said. Direct quotes, practically. No joke. 
And now Gene Bailey's going to come out here and condemn it and say, oh, how evil. You're calling us evil? How wrong is that? Oh, my God. We can't stand for it. It's wrong. We can't, ha- we can't live in that society or coarsening discourse. That's what he's about to do, right? We're at war. Um, I want to read this. Uh, a friend of mine from California sent this to me. This is opinion from a former judge, uh, Keith Alber. And uh, he said this, I am a student of law whose age is 85. My first year of college was 68 years ago. One class I took was political science. Now listen to this. A half page of my textbook essentially outlined a few steps to overturn a democracy. Number one, divide. Okay, who is this person that he's talking about? First of all, uh, what... What book were they reading from? What class were they in? What is he? What is all of this? Why is this relevant? Is this somebody that's actually important to society? Is it a senator or something that wrote this book? Like, why do we care about any of this? Hide the nation philosophically. Check. Foment racial strife. Check again. Cause distrust of police authority. Number four, swarm the nation's borders indiscriminately and unconstitutionally. Check again. Dude, is this even true? This does not sound true to me. This sounds like it's completely made up, which is, interestingly enough, exactly what these people tend to do. Make shit up constantly. Yeah, I, I, I'm doubting this. I'm sorry. Hard doubt. Give me a little bit of evidence. That's all I want. Just a little evidence that this is real. Number five, engender the military strength to weaken it. Engender the military strength to weaken it. When was this book written? Who is it written by? What is he even talking about? When was it written? Not familiar yet. Number six, overburdened citizens with more unfair taxation. Number seven, encourage civil rioting and discourage accountability for all crime. Number eight, control all the balloting. And then number nine, control all the media. Is it possible, and listen to this, what was printed in 1954 as a possible diabolic nightmare has become an emerging reality. I hope that Americans will unite enough to pin a... See, this is another perfect example. They're making my case for me. Find out what the Democrats are accusing you of and then accuse them of it. They're being accused of destroying democracy accurately. You accused them of destroying a democracy in response. That's the strategy. Whatever you're going to be accused of, accuse them first. A good finish. You know, Lance, you, uh, a former judge said this. This is written in 1954. You know, if you don't want to read, go back and look at half the movies that have been out in the last five, ten years. I mean, this is what, the, what we've been listening to from Hollywood was this sort of takeover. No countries like the United States, Gene. Every time we have come to this point, the, uh, the reality is the media hasn't been able to silence us. You and I are talking and thousands of people are listening. They are the media. What is he? They're constantly screaming and crying about being silenced by the media. They are the media. What are they talking about? They have not been silenced. They won't be silenced. It is not possible for them to be silenced. It's just a persecution complex, nonstop persecution complex. Listening, and the gospel ends up showing up right around the time when we start going over a cliff. It happened um, in the Great Awakenings before our revolution. It happened. You notice how he slips in the phrase "the Great Awakening" constantly. Uh, this is just the first example I've heard in this episode. He says it like in at least in every episode, at least once in everything that I hear him in. It's a reference to a QAnon. It's called a dog whistle. It's a QAnon dog whistle. He wants people to think that he is a QAnoner. He wants people to recognize that he stands for QAnon and defends it and everything else. That's what it's all about. That's why he says the Great Awakening. The Great Awakening is obviously a QAnon phrase that they use constantly, so...
happened in the Great Awakening before the Civil War. It happened in the post-World War II era with the Soviet Union. It's happening now, Gene, because there's uh, 30 or 40 million people that are actually in unity that we are not going to let the country go over a cliff. We're not going to be triggered into a war. And the policies of these people are going to fail. The, there's a lot of change that's happened at the ballot boxes. There's been tremendous election reform in many states. We, we are flooding the zone in these precincts. They, they're having a hard time stealing. That's why they're blaming us for stealing. It's kind of weird. It's like the person who's cheating on their spouse is jealous. Of but nobody's accusing them of stealing the 2020 election. See, everything routes back to accusing the other side of what they're being accused of if they can accuse the other side of what they're being accused of they believe that it invalidates the accusation against them that's what it's all about so their spouse who are they with they're they're projecting on us but this next election cycle i believe is going to be the ballots it's going to be the votes the media is not going to be silent. A week ago, Gene, they took me off of YouTube because they don't like my politics. 200,000 subscribers were cut out of my base. Right. Oh, good. That's good news. I didn't hear about that. Uh, that's fantastic, though. This guy is an extremist who espouses deeply extreme ideas that are destructive to democracy. I'm glad that YouTube is enforcing their terms of service and removed him. Now, now do Greg Locke for me and Robin Bullock both. They both have a hundred to two hundred thousand subbies each. Those two people do, uh, of course, depending on like which person you're talking about or whatever. Last week, because they don't like my politics. You know what? Um, Has nothing to do with liking your politics. It's the fact that you spread disinformation. Still talking, and they're not going to silence me. So I think we're going to see this awakening, and I think we're going to see what we predicted. When the election was stolen, a conservative backlash, and it's coming in November. Amen. I agree. A conservative backlash. Listen to what ABC had to say about the 70 million. Watch. Has the president essentially given up on those MAGA Republicans, some 70 million people? Well, what? Okay. There are not 70 million MAGA Republicans. There are 70 million Republicans who voted for Trump in the 2020 election. That doesn't mean that they're MAGA Republicans. There's a very distinct difference between MAGA Republicans and, you know, people who voted for Trump. But, you know, the nuance doesn't matter. You know what matters? Convincing the other side that Democrats are evil. That's what really actually matters to them. What the president has done is said that he will continue to work with mainstream Republicans, that he will work with Democrats, that he will work with independents to get things done in our country. But this MAGA Republican agenda, this hate-fueled agenda, this MAGA Republican agenda that we saw incite violence on our nation's capital has no place in a democracy. And if we are not intentional about calling it out, which is what the president did, uh, then our country, everything that our country is built upon is in danger. Oh, my. Hard agree. Hard agree on that point. Well, you know, uh, Mario, when I hear this, I just want to throw something at the screen. Uh, this is... I thought you were trying to convince me that you're not violent. Saying things like that is not helping your case. If we say MAGA Republicans, notice, you, I think there was a shred of truth in there that Biden is willing to work with establishment Republicans. Well, guess what? We don't yeah. want those guys. We don't there you go. See, they, they are identifying themselves as the extremists that they are. Absolutely fascinating. Like, they're not connecting the dots on this, are they? We don't want the no. establishment Republicans. We know who they are. Uh, we don't want that, Mario. No, we don't. Uh, we want to break every chaining uh, uh, as possible. And I want to. That is a deeply disturbing thing to say. Tell you what, what's really going on here that I think is so essential for everyone to see. Normal is extreme. Believing in just two genders, believing in biology, believing in morality. Vast majority of people accept that there are two sexes use sex and gender differently. They're not the same thing. Um, 
vast majority of people accept biology. I accept biology. Everybody is moral in their own opinion. Morality is subjective. It, it changes from person to person. And trust me, if you think you get your morality from the Bible, you're wrong. You don't. The Bible endorses moral positions of all different sorts. It says genocide is good. It says genocide is bad. It says being gay is bad. And it says love your neighbor as yourself and don't judge lest ye be judged. There are all kinds of different moral positions because it's a big fucking book. It is straight up hard to not cherry pick the Bible because it, it espouses a moral position on every moral issue and it, is, and it contradicts itself on every moral issue too. If you think you get your morals from the Bible, no. You get your morals from traditions and cultural standards and beliefs and foundations and all of that stuff and then you look for those already existing morals in the bible and you find them because it has every moral position in it believing in american freedom believing in the second amendment are now all extremism believing in biology but refusing to use a mask or vaccinate because jesus will protect you from covid right yeah good point kylo absolutely thank you so much for that that message uh, they pretend to believe in biology when it's convenient. They pretend to believe in morals and all this other stuff when it's convenient. The moment it's convenient to drop all of that shit, they do. Now, there's a tone that everyone needs to feel, both from this lady that was just on and from Biden, is you are stupid, I am smart. I can say what I want and make comparisons that are absolutely insane. I'm gonna compare January 6th to the billions of dollars and the 200 cities that were burned by BLM. That cities were not burned by BLM like that. I'm willing to believe anything with a little evidence. There is no evidence that BLM, quote unquote, burned any cities down. They say New York City was burned down by BLM. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. It's still here. I live here. It's perfectly fine. They say Portland was burned down by Black Lives Matter and Antifa. No. No, it wasn't. Portland, New York City, they're all still there. They're all perfectly fine. There were some protests. They were largely nonviolent. These cities are still here and fine. That was not insurrection. This was. That That's correct. That's accurate. That wasn't an insurrection. Even assuming that there was violence in those cities, Portland and Seattle and everywhere else, New York City, there wasn't. But even assuming there was, that it wouldn't have been considered an insurrection. This was absolutely, January 6th, 100% was an insurrection. That's the threat. This isn't. The lockdown doesn't matter. The price of What lockdown? There was no lockdown. There was a state-by-state state 30 day lockdown in some places. They act like, you know, the government forced everybody into their homes and welded their doors shut like happened in China. It's nonsense. The gas doesn't matter. The borders being broken doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Do not look at all of the madness we have put on you. Listen to us. We're telling you these people are crazy because they're sane. These people can't be trusted because they're honest. These people cannot be allowed to come into power because they have wisdom. Dude, what is he even talking about? This is exactly what's being said. And that's why we can't buy it. That's why we have to, as I've said every week, we got to keep our foot on the gas and understand that this rhetoric of desperation, of arrogance, of insulting the audience, of not bothering to even check how you look or how you're behaving, but one thing that happens, ladies and gentlemen, is God always has people. And there's a core in the body of Christ that's waking up right now. Amen. And I believe they're not satisfied with regular church. Yeah. They're not satisfied with people playing games with the gifts of the Spirit. They want power. They want fire. They want the Bible. Yeah. They want the anointing. Yeah. And just as Daniels and Josephs are raised up in the middle of tyrants and tumultuous societies, 
there is a core of God's people coming to the front. You know, our workers in Sacramento right now have been going door to door witnessing. You need to know this. This is good news. Every door they knock on, Frank Saldana, our leader of the inner city action who works with us, he, he said, Mario, everybody was friendly. Everybody was open to the gospel. Everyone in California that we went door to door. Well, I don't know what he's talking about, but let me tell you this. I did go door to door to preach the gospel from age one to, I don't know, 18, give or take. And uh, they were not friendly. They were not open to the gospel. Nobody was, ultimately. I think I maybe one to two percent of the people who opened their door was willing to listen to my pitch and then said no thanks and shut the door or or at least said i appreciate it but don't come back i'm not really that interested the other 98 99 percent opened the door saw who i was said not interested slammed it in my face so i can tell you personal from personal experience i know for a fact the vast majority of people are not interested in the gospel, quote unquote, and are not friendly when you open the door or whatever. In Sacramento, wanted Christ, wanted to be prayed for. That's not what the media wants to know. There is a harvest, just like Lange said, there's a massive harvest of God that's already started. And I, I'm thrilled to be living in this hour right now. I'm not terrified. I'm thrilled to be living in this hour because it is absolutely the hour of great harvest. Yeah, so these people believe that Donald Trump is the new messiah. I talked about this on my main channel recently. I talked about it in part one. Uh, once again, if you want to hear more about it, just watch the main channel video probably about it. But they think he's the son of man. They think he's a new Christ uh, for the new Israel, which is America. Uh, completely insane. Completely insane. They worship him like a god. All right, before I get off of this, Pastor Hank, I'll let you respond first. Let's see what President Trump had to say about all of this. Watch. As you know, this week, Joe Biden came to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to give the most vicious, hateful, and divisive speech ever delivered by an American. This coming from Donald Trump, accusing another speech of being the most vicious, hateful, and divisive. I love it. American president vilifying 75 million citizens plus another probably 75 to 150. Donald Trump thinks he has 150 million supporters. That's insane. If we want to be accurate about it, as threats to democracy and as enemies of the state. You're all enemies of the state. He Joe Biden never said they were enemies of the state. There are people who, you know, they would probably consider to be enemies of the state, like te domestic terrorists and stuff, who are actively part of, like, terror groups that run around and, and do extreme stuff. But the average MAGA voting Republican is not, quote unquote, an enemy of the state. They are extremists and they are contributing to the downfall of democracy. But Joe Biden never said enemy of the state. He's an enemy of the state. You want to know the truth? Pastor Hank, he said he's an enemy of the state. What are your thoughts? Well, I think he's terrific, uh, President Trump. But anyway, by the way, do Boy, is that his impression of Trump? Oh, my God. You have my President Trump pin. I noticed. I, saw I will be the greatest president that God ever created. There you go. Listen, here's what I think. There is something that we have. That is so cringy. Have to understand when you listen to MABA, make America Biden awful, or MAGA, make America great again, it really comes down to two issues. And here's what they don't realize they call it 70 million or even growing to 100 million. That number's gonna to continue to grow of those that are gonna support making America great again. Here's why. It really comes down to MAGA. They can call it a movement of evil, but really it's a movement of honor. 
No, it isn't. Uh, nobody called it a movement of evil, I don't think. Uh, they're saying that they're trying to destroy democracy. Good and evil, those types of blacks and whites, are reserved for people like Hank Kuhneman, who believe that this is a literal spiritual war between good and evil, that Donald Trump is the Messiah and Joe Biden is trying to prevent the Messiah from taking his rightful place, blah, 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 whatever, you know. You know how they how they do. You know how all of the irrational nonsense goes. Their MABA is a movement of dishonor, and here's why. The things that MAGA stands for are, are God, the Lord Jesus Christ, Israel, Jerusalem, the right to protect children outside of the womb, inside of the womb. Come on. Decency, morality, protecting our children. Come on. Uh, making uh, America great so that people don't live under the harshness of inflation and high gas prices and, and, and tyranny and dictatorship that MABA does. And so God always honors the honorable and he judges the dishonorable. I want to read a scripture lastly. Proverbs 28, 18. Don't you ever fear those of you that are watching and the nonsense that the secular media is picking up that MAGA somehow is evil and a threat. Listen to me. It's because God has anointed it. Boy, they really did not like being called a threat to democracy, did they? Uh, did you catch what he said there just now? Listen to what he said there again about the MAGA movement. That the sec also, I don't know why he keeps calling it MAGA. That's like really annoying. Secular media is picking up that MAGA somehow is evil and a threat. Listen to me. It's because God has anointed it because of honor. Proverbs 28. God has anointed it. Donald Trump is anointed by God to be the president. This is now a religious group. It's a, it's a religion, a full-blown religion. It's not just a, a cult anymore. It is now a religion, separate from Christianity. They even have their own holy book, the Patriot Bible. It has a copy of the New Testament and the founding documents and like some of Trump's speeches and stuff like that in it. No joke. They believe that Trump is the son of man as described in the Bible. Jesus is supposed to be the son of man. There are two prophetic roles in the Bible. There's the son of man, and then there's the son of God. And people, generally Christians believe that, that Jesus fulfills both roles, son of man and son of God. He already fulfilled the son of God role by coming back and dying for your sins. They believe that he's going to come back a second time to do the son of man bit. But now people like Hank Kuhneman, him included, believe that Trump is the son of man. He's going to fulfill the son of man role. That's what they believe. No joke. He's the new Messiah, the new Christ. They even wrote a book about it. If you haven't seen this, I've been talking about this book recently, The Son of Man, The Christ, Donald Trump. Seriously, that's where we're at. 18, don't ever think God's not going to save America. Whoever walks uprightly will be saved. Whoever walks uprightly will be saved. That's what MAGA promotes. And I'm going to tell you something. It's why America will be saved. But listen to the rest of the verse. But whoever is perverse in their ways shall fall at once. Their agenda is crumbling down and they know it. So guess what? They're going to attack what is honorable, what is right. But it's going to backfire. It's going to flop. And then God's going to keep flipping this thing. And we're. Uh, that's a reference to an old prophecy he gave called Flop Flip. Oh my God, it's so cringy. I'll, I'll tell you about Flop Flip in a minute. We're going to continue to win. Amen. Boy, that's a good word. I saw you preach that Sunday as well. Uh, yeah, honor, dishonor. Yeah. Honor and dishonor. All right. So listen to this. Okay, I got to play flop flip before we move on. Let me just show you his flop flip prophecy. Oh, it's so cringy. I can't stand it. It's just the worst, dude. <laughs> My face just wants to implode every time I hear it. All right, listen to him explain the flop flip prophecy. But watch, for you have heard the saying flip flop. But I speak to you this day flop flip. You say, what do you mean? I Apparent, this is supposed to be a prophecy that he names Flop Flip. I guess God speaks in American idioms. Speak Flop Flip because the agenda of hell and those who have agreed 
and thought that they could steal this land through your election and steal the future from your children, it shall flop. And then watch what shall arise. Whistleblowers after whistleblowers. They shall not only see that their agenda has flopped, they will begin to flip. And God says there will be a turning of my hand and a turning of their of their mouths and they will speak loudly and they will turn on one another and they will expose one another to save what they would think their own future watch for the great flip and the Lord says when you see this it will flip in this nation too yeah, so that's the flop flip prophecy. And he's been doubling and tripling down on that since he said it back in September 2021. No joke. That's how old his supposed flop flip prophecy is. It is so cringy. Oh, my God. Anyway, keep listening to this. I got to get to this before the break. Uh, this is what Joe Biden put out there on his Twitter account. MAGA proposals are a threat to the very soul of this country. Now, this goes to what Pastor Hank was saying, a movement, except it didn't work. I got a, several I want to read. Or let's go to the next one. Oilfield Rando says, I go to work. I work hard. I go to the gym. I hunt. I fish. I spend time with friends and family. I pay my taxes. I don't break the law. I play disc golf. I am a threat to the very soul of this nation. You are, actually. As a matter of fact, the MAGA movement is a threat to the soul of the nation in the sense that they are doing everything that they can to reverse democracy to destroy democracy to erase the democratic republic that we have in this country that is deeply dangerous to society it is a quick way to destroy the country actually yes that's accurate uh how about texas teacher i'm a middle-aged teacher i teach low-income children the worst neighborhood in my area i raised seven children put myself through school while raising the first two alone i am a threat to the very soul of Wait, I'm sorry. Did she think that those things is what Biden identified as a threat to the soul of the nation? Did she think that Biden was saying that people who work with low income students, uh, they are by doing that, that is what is a danger to society? I'm sorry. They're completely misunderstanding, I guess. My mistake or Biden's mistake. Let me clarify. It's the fact that you're voting for candidates that want to destroy democracy, that, that are openly telling you that they want to erase the existence of the democracy, that are talking shit about democracy, who are claiming that this isn't a democracy in the first place, that this is a republic and democracy is bad and we should be doing things differently. That's the problem. The fact that you're voting for those people and vocal about it. That's the issue. I guess we weren't clear enough. My mistake. Of this nation. Or what Abu Reed? I am a retired Marine with 26 years of service. I volunteer with Habitat for Humanity at my local church. Married to the same woman for 35 years. I raise cows and chickens. And I wear Hawaiian print shirts. So obviously, I'm a threat to the very soul of this nation. And you know what else they do? They scream about how persecuted they are. They try they vote for candidates who will do everything that they can to erase the line between church and state. And every time they go to Thanksgiving dinner, they talk to their family about how Biden cheated in the election and how Trump should be president and all that stuff. The fact that you were a Marine for 26 years is inconsequential to the other things that you do it has nothing to do with it. That's not the thing that Biden was complaining about. But this, you know, this is how propaganda works. It's all about propagandizing to people, making them look more normal than they are. In reality, these people are extremists. They're domestic terrorists, and they're trying to destroy the country to the best of their ability. They're trying to destroy democracy because that's what Trump wanted them to do. And they're just following his they're just following his lead following his instructions here. Lady Liberty, ultra MAGA tri Trumpy says, I work 45 hours a week. I'm a parent, a friend, a coworker. 
I donate, I volunteer and donate regularly. I pay my bills and taxes. I don't steal. I don't cheat. I read, travel, and paint. I am MAGA. I am a threat to the very soul of this nation. Again, the things that you just listed were not the things that make you a threat to this country. How did that fly right over their heads? It didn't. This is all, they know exactly what's being talked about here. They know exactly what things they do that are dangerous to society. They just want to make it out like they're victims. I'm not done yet. Let's go to the next one. I serve my country. I'm done. I simply can't. I can only repeat the same shit so many times. This is all about propagandizing. That's the whole point here. It's absolutely disgusting. But this is what's so encouraging to see people see this and go, wait a minute. What that says to me, and I don't know those people that responded there on Twitter, but what they said was, I recognize what you're trying to do. And guess what? That's who I am. And I'm not afraid to stand up for it. This awesome. Great. That'll make you easier to identify by the FBI. Fantastic. Go ahead and keep doing it. This is a bonus that we let's let's rewind two and a half years or so. We would not see this. It was all about uh, BLM and riots and defund the police, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No serious person was talking about defunding the police, first of all. And second, BLM was not rioting like mad, like they want to make out. I just want to make sure we're all clear on the propaganda methods they're using right now. This is now the... The verbiage has changed. And now we're seeing Americans I, stand up. You know, sometimes, Gene, somebody will tap into us as, a, you know, prophetic people. Somebody texted me and they said, during the George Floyd riots, they said, where is this all going? And I didn't know, but I, I texted back to them. It's like the anointing just spoke through me. I said, beginning now, the ax is laid to the root of the tree in America. From now on, we will discover the root and the fruit of what is in this country. So this is supposed to be a prophecy from God. And I think what's happening is we're in the late stage manifestation of the fruit of a very sick tree. And you're seeing it in the mutilation of children by hospitals where doctors are, you know, with the money that they are, they're, they're going to lose off of abortions, they're prepared to make up with mutilating, mutilating the genitals of children. Nobody's doing that. That's not happening. This is completely made up. This is a fabricated problem that does not exist. But it's a useful thing to, it's a useful piece of propaganda to spread around. That's why they say it. This is not happening. Right. And there's no screech, there's no scream about this. This is the Democrat Party politics. I think the American people are, uh, are out of, I, I, what, what, what uh, Mario said about Frank Soldano, I think the American people are kind of becoming horrified by the discovery of how advanced this, this rotten fruit is. And, I, and remember this, the media has a very powerful role in propaganda. They are blasting all the time, which means there are a lot of people that aren't hearing what you and I are saying. We're, we're walking in the light. We really have to lift up our voices and we have to reach outside. Thank God the Joe Rogans and even the Bill Mars and the Elon Musks, we're not alone. These guys are saying something ain't healthy here. So I believe if we keep pushing this thing in prayer and lift up our voices, We'll start to see the harvest come in, and I think we're going to see the root and the fruit exposed to the degree that America will say, that's not the country I want. Wow. This guy just thanked Bill Maher and Joe Rogan for working for their cause. You know, Bill Maher has always pretended to be a liberal. If I were him, I would be deeply ashamed and embarrassed by the fact that he just got these people's endorsement. That is really, really embarrassing. That's true. I agree with you. You know, we're going to see the country that we want. We're going to get that. We're going to get our nation back because we're taking America back. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about citizens sanity. What does that mean? And we're going to talk to the person who wrote this book, Running Into the Fire, Terry Hasdorf. You're going to want to watch this. Don't go away. Wow. Absolutely crazy. I wonder if they're eventually going to get to this book, which is passed out at Trump rallies regularly.
President Donald J. Trump, the Son of Man, the Christ by Helgard Muller. Um, I, I wonder if they'll eventually talk about that book. I, I'm absolutely fascinated to know what they have to say about it. They are, This is a new religion. This is a new religion that focuses on Donald Trump as the new messiah. Jesus level messiah. They, they, their own words, not mine. They say it. Absolutely nuts, man. If you want to see me cover more stuff like this and let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Telltale Atheist.